Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Today we'll be making three individual waterfall tables and two variations on a river table. These were a recent project in the Wood Whisperer Guild, and I'll tell you a bit about the guild later on in this video, so let's get started. Back in November of 2015, I picked up an ash log with my newly built log trailer and slabbed it up in my backyard with my chainsaw mill and my dad giving me a hand. These were stacked outdoors for a bit over a year before I brought them indoors to finish drying. The second slab from the bottom on the shorter log is the slab that I'll be using for the ash waterfall table. In the spring of 2016, I picked up some small logs from an orchard. These sat in my driveway for almost a year while I built my bandsaw mill. In one of my first videos showing the bandsaw mill in use, I cut this log which would become the two river tables. Pretty cool. That's nice. So the first table we're going to take a look at is the ash waterfall table. I'll get started by trimming the ends to remove the damaged material. Before I do the surfacing on the slab, I'll do an initial fill of epoxy. I've applied masking tape to the underside and ends of the slab, and I'm filling from the bottom side. I'll do two fills at this orientation. The first will be pretty light. It will flow down and contact the tape for the sealing in the crack. Once that epoxy has set, I can pour a much heavier fill completely fill in the cracks without worrying about the epoxy seeping past the tape. Once that's cured, I can flip the slab over and fill any areas where the epoxy didn't flow to and fill any areas that don't run all the way through the slab. Next up is flattening and surfacing. The slab sits on my flat assembly table and is shimmed to keep it from rocking. This slab has a bit of twist that the router sled will remove. I'll make passes over the slab with the router to remove the high spots and keep lowering the bit until I've covered the entire surface. Once that side is done, the slab can be flipped over and the process can be repeated. I stopped the bit before the entire surface was cleaned up so I can include some saw marks towards the edge of the slab as a reminder of the slab's backstory. After a quick sanding to remove the milling marks, some mineral spirits helps to give a preview of the green. I'll clean up the epoxy from the ends and do a little touch of work on the surface. Next I'll add some decorative butterflies to the crack, which would be in the leg of the table. I had an off cut from the high boy that had some crotch figure in it and used those to create the butterflies. I'll lay out the shape that I want on each of them and cut them out. The little one was a little too small to cut on the bandsaw, so I did it with the saw and a chisel. The butterflies get stuck down where I want them to go with carpet tape, and the shape is traced onto the slab with a knife. A router is used to remove the bulk of the waste, and the final cleanup can be done back to the lines with some chisels. I'll knock off the bottom edges of the butterflies, apply glue to the mortises, and hammer the butterflies in. After the glue dries and they're flushed up, here's how they look. That's nice. That's going to be nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Next, a little prep work on the live edge. I'll remove the residual bark and sand the edge smooth. The top edge is sharp and fragile, so I'll knock off the edge with a spoke shave and blend it with some hand sanding. On to the waterfall joint. I'm cutting this one with a circular saw and a straight edge, and the straight edge just happens to be the track for a track saw. Next, I'll make the second cut to remove the wedge of waste. This cut needs to be aligned perfectly so a blade cuts along the existing angled cut right next to the surface of the slab and parallel to the first cut. To make checking the fit easier, I'll attach the clamping calls now. These ones extend to the cut to give the router I'll be using to cut the mortises a bit of extra support and to protect the edge of the slab. Clamping the two parts together, I can see the cuts meet up nicely in the middle but are open on the ends. This can be corrected with a hand plane and I'll check the cut as I go to make sure it's flat. Also verify the angle is the same along its length. 
After tweaking both sides, the two parts come together perfectly with no gap along the top, sides, or bottom. On this table, I'll use the router with an edge guide to cut the mortises for floating tendons, which will reinforce the joint. To get ready for the glue up, the extra bit of the calls can be cut away so the grain of the slab is visible to make sure the left to right alignment is correct. For the glue up, I'm using epoxy, which should give me all the working time I could possibly need to get this together and make sure the grain is aligned as it travels across the joint. Once the epoxy sets, the rest of the calls can be removed by splitting down one of the plies. The remaining veneers are quickly chewed through by the sander as I do the final surface prep to get the table ready for finish. One last check with some mineral spirits to look for any tear out or glue residue that I may have missed. For a finish, I'm using my usual five coats of armor seal sanding between each coat with 600 grit sandpaper. As I mentioned in the beginning, these waterfall tables were recently a project in the Wood Whisperer Guild. If you're not familiar with the Guild, let me tell you a bit about it while the finish brings this table to life. The Guild is an online community centered around high quality instructional videos that walk you step by step through a project. Projects come with detailed plans and cut lists and there are many member benefits like live demos, access to our Facebook community and some pretty nice industry discounts. There are many projects to choose from and you can save money by bundling multiple projects together. If you're not ready to purchase a project and become a member, there's also a free picture frame project which will give you a great feel for what the guild is. Time to make a real base for this table. I'm getting the stock for the base from this reject cherry slab that I've had for a few years. I decided on the overall trapezoidal shape and drew a full scale image of it on my assembly table. I can use this drawing to get all the final lengths for each part and the angle of display. The joinery on the base will be bridle joints, so I'll lay out and scrap the shoulders of each joint and use a table saw to cut the walls of each part and remove the bulk of the waist. At the bench, I'll clean up back to the shoulder lines of each part. For the glue up on this, I'll use calls again to align the clamping force. Once the glue sets, the calls can be removed, the whole base finish prepped, and finish can be applied. I'll attach the base with counterboard socket head cap screws, and this table is done. That's, uh, that's nice. Next we'll take a look at the Resin River Waterfall Table. The process for this one is pretty similar to the first. After the initial defect filling with epoxy, the slack can be flattened on the assembly table with the router sled. These crotch sections developed a fair amount of warp as I'd expect from an area of the tree with a good amount of stress in it, so it did end up losing a good amount of thickness as I was doing the flattening and surfacing. With the surfacing out of the way, I can focus on the epoxy pour. I use sheathing tape to create a form between the two limbs and clamp the slab down to the bench. I'll be doing the fill in two pours. This first one will be thin and will just serve to further create a barrier up against the tape 
so I won't have to worry as much about the epoxy leaking out. I add a couple metallic pigments, mix it up, and put the cup in the vacuum chamber to pull the air bubbles out. I'll pour that in and let it sit for about a day until it's pretty well gelled up and then start on the main pour. The epoxy I'm using for this river is Ecopoxy's liquid plastic. I'm mixing it at a 2 to 1 ratio for a harder cure. 1, 2, and 10. The pigments I'm using are equal parts of Perlex, True Blue, and Turquoise. Again the air is pulled out in the vacuum chamber and then it's time to pour. The biggest advantage of using a product like this is its long set time. This allows you to do thick pours without having to worry about heat buildup that could cause curing issues. Over the next day I'll watch for any bubbles that rise out of the epoxy and pop them with a torch. After about four days the epoxy has cured and I can remove the tape. As the epoxy went through its final cure, it shrunk below the surface of the slab so ran the whole thing through the planer to flush everything up. And here's how the slab and the epoxy look with some mineral spirits applied. Now it's on to the waterfall joint. This time I'm using a track saw to make the process a bit easier. The cut was pretty darn good off the saw, but I gave it a few passes with the plane just to further clean things up. The reinforcement on this waterfall joint is done with the domino, again just an easier method. Next I can attach the clamping calls and get the two parts glued together. I'll remove the calls and double check things with some mineral spirits. Next I'll work on polishing the epoxy to bring back its luster. I sanded the wood to 180 grit and I'll take the epoxy up to 1000 grit, working through the grits and cleaning off the surface after each grit. And lastly, it's time to get some finish on this one. Next up is the glass river table. This one's going to be pretty close to the last one. A big difference on this one is I didn't fully surface both sides. I surfaced the top side and didn't fully clean up the underside so I could preserve some more thickness. The waterfall joint goes exactly the same way as the last one, except now instead of cutting through resin, I'm cutting through crotch. Now that this thing is glued up into an L, I can work on coming up with a shape for the glass. I'm creating a pattern that follows the grain of the wood out of MDF. Once I have the shape finalized, I can take the template to the glass shop and have them cut a matching piece of glass that can be inlaid into the table. A couple weeks later, that piece of MDF has been transformed into a piece of glass and I can get started on the inlay. I'll start working on my inlay template by routing around the perimeter of the glass. Since the glass was hand cut, I'm using the glass instead of the MDF template in case there are any discrepancies. To make the inlay process easier, I'll take the templates a step further and make a perfectly sized negative template. This will make it easier to position the glass exactly in the right spot and I can test fit the glass to make sure everything fits correctly. I had to tweak the negative template a bit to get the fit perfect, but once it was perfect I could stick the template down to the slab in exactly the right position and route the rabbit the glass will sit in with a pattern bit. A little finesse work and this table is ready for finish.
Now those two crotch tables need bases. These ones will be made from steel and will have a similar trapezoidal shape. I'll again draw a full size image of what I'm after and since the base will have mitered corners, the drawing also makes it easy to bisect the overall angle so I can pick up the miter angle with a bevel gauge and transfer that to my saw. I'll make all the cuts on the bandsaw for both bases. The base of the epoxy river table is narrower, so the length of the top and bottom pieces are shorter, but the side pieces are exactly the same. I'll drill the mounting holes through the top and clean off all the mill scale before welding them together. I grind the weld flush and then it's time for finish. On the bigger one I'm doing a baked on boil linseed oil finish. The base sat in my oven for about an hour at 550 degrees before I quickly pulled it out and wiped boil linseed oil onto the surface. This gives the base an almost bronze look. The other one I want to leave just as a bright brushed steel type look so I cleaned it off and applied a few coats of shellac. So this video is actually cut down from the 17 videos on building these three tables over in the guild. So if you want a more in-depth look at the construction of all three of these tables, all the different variations in all the different tables, definitely check that out. There'll be a link to that down in the description. So I'm really happy with the way that all three of these turned out. I think though my favorite is going to be the glass inlay river table. Just something about having the crotch figure just come right over the corner here with this really nice piece of glass. I think the color of the blue in this glass and the just overall transparency there just makes a really nice compliment up against the elm for the wood. So this is probably my favorite. Probably the ash one is my second favorite. It has those really subtle uh, crotch wood bow ties in the leg and I think that adds a nice subtle feel to it. And there's some really cool uh, figure and some really interesting stain down here as well. Overall, I do like all three of them. <laughs> so that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything in the video, please feel free to leave me a comment as I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.